A cat such a midsole man, Ed Budd here, back with the viewers' favourite running news. Today, taking a quick look at a leaked image of the Invincible 4 from Nike, also a banging new colorway soon to be released for the Alpha Fly 3, and running shoes seem to be becoming more fashionable with them appearing on the feet of some big celebrities. We're also taking a look at a best of running shoes guide from Tom's Guide this time. I'll be giving you my hot takes on their selections. Let's get to it. Thanks for tuning in people, it's always appreciated. Do hit that subscribe button to help the channel get out to a few more people. Hit the like button for this video too if you're enjoying the content and also drop us a comment to help fight the algorithm. Danke schön. Loads of stories to get to so let's get straight into it. We got a leaked image here of what seems to be the Invincible Run 4 from Nike. Some people absolutely love that shoe by multiple pairs of it. They always pick it up when there's a new iteration. I was aware there was going to be like a a name change to the Invincible Run model, but it perhaps doesn't seem like that's the case this time. It's not entirely clear. Some people reckoned it would be called the Vomero Plus, but it's really hard to actually determine whether that is the case. There does seem to be a Vomero 18, obviously on the horizon, but that shoe bears no resemblance to this new updated model of what appears to be the Invincible. Call it what you will, it still looks like an Invincible run. Nike will have to come up with some very elaborate reasoning behind the name change here for the shoe without any major change to the actual functionality. I'm sure they'll manage it though, there'll be a special new load of spiel super wide four foot area in terms of cushion though there are lace loops on there rather than the standard eyelet chain that's no doubt going to improve the lockdown that wasn't really stellar in the Invincible Run 3 for some people. I know a lot of people got some heel slip issues there. I didn't have any problems with the V2 or V3 in terms of heel slip, but perhaps this new upper will improve things. The tongue appears to be very similar to the previous versions. Maybe you could say this is a greatest hits of the Invincible Run so far without that bulbous foam protruding around the back of the heel. With every version that they do, it seems like it's getting closer to my special modified custom pair. I sawed off all the foam around here and it made it a much more enjoyable shoe to run in. Well, it looks blooming ridiculous, but hey, you can't have it all, right? It does say Flyknit on the side of the upper, but it's about as Flyknit as a plastic bottle and not that lovely material that we had in the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit or the Zoom Fly Flyknit as well. It was just like a sock. Bring it back, Nike. Bring it back. You'll either love the massive ZMAX logo on the side of the midsole wall or not, but I think it's about time to refine the Nike daily models down to three or four different streams, really. There's just too many options right now and it just confuses people, especially people that are new to running and they're wanting to pick up a great shoe. They might end up picking up three or four and not really having something that they want. Obviously, Nike also want to get rid of some of the very high unwanted stock levels in some of their retail outlets at the moment. Let's not forget these Jordan 1s just sitting at the moment in shops, which is really weird. Moving on, sometimes Nike do hit the nail right on the head. And I think with this new colorway of the Alpha Fly 3, seems to be an Elliot Kipchoge inspired one. I think it's pure brilliance. This is a beautiful colorway to me. I've been asking for a shoe that has a midsole wall that looks like dirt for years and years. Like my local roots here, you get lots of debris, it can get quite muddy. This version is perfect for that. Dusty Kenyan dirt outsole there. And the midsole wall, you got the stinging taste of an almost sort of green mint color there. The frosty text on the air zoom units and the superb gradient of the Kenyan dirt on the midsole. It is perfection. It means I yet again have to try to restrain myself there not to buy another pair of Alpha Fly 3s. I've got two already. I don't need any more. They do look so good. I mean, I really like the Alpha Fly 3. I think it's a top marathon pace shoe for me. I'm not entirely sure it really hits the spot for the half marathon or anything else really, but this is like running shoe profile Nirvana here. Everything about this one is speaking to me. It's a real banger. No idea when it's gonna launch. Well done, Nike. 
I've got more evidence here that running shoes are becoming a fashion statement. I mean, you never see me leave the house without wearing a pair of running shoes. And I am a real fashion icon it is known. People come to me for fashion advice and they never listen to it. My ideas are just too outlandish. More of those superstars of the fashion world are reaching for their running shoes and the top manufacturers are very keen to collaborate with them. Farrell Williams here was seen rocking a pair of the special Elite Pro Evo 1 shoes. Yeah, the ones that you have to enter a draw to even have a chance of buying, you know, for like 450 quid or something. Here he is rocking them to carry the Olympic torch. I mean, that's athletics at its peak, right? Clearly a special version of the shoe though, a new colorway that we haven't seen before. I do remember them saying that this was elite only, you know, it's never gonna be made available to the public again. And they've done a few drops of it now. Perhaps they'll put these out as well at some point. There's also a collaboration with Kith here, the New York based lifestyle brand. You seem to have a more beefed up version of what looks like the Pro Evo 1. Light Strike Pro though in the midsole or not whatever's in that other shoe. Looks more like what I would expect from the Adios Pro 4. I mean, is that shoe ever gonna launch? Just as I say that, some images of the Adios Pro 4 drop, and it does appear that it's been launched in certain parts of the world, over in Malaysia by the looks of it. This one's fire, with that white, red, black colorway. Little hint of the highlighter yellow as well. Super clean, and it won't be once I wear it outside, almost instantly on my local routes. I do note the tech mentioned on the medial side of the upper. Can you spot it? light lock, which is clearly a nod to having standard lace eyelets rather than those little fabric loops that they had in the Adios Pro 3. I didn't really like those, they weren't a great addition, just seems like they've gone back to a standard eyelet arrangement and that's probably a good thing, it's going to make the shoe a little bit lighter, less material in the upper is always good. So the upper on this image certainly looks different to that other one, that Kith collaboration, a little switched up in the heel maybe there to make it a more fashion orientated lifestyle like version of the shoe. Adidas are known for this method. They've got the Stella McCartney versions of the Prime X2 for example. Those have got bolstered upper materials and sometimes different lace fixtures as well. Who's your favourite celebrity that's been wearing some running shoes of recent time? My favourite celebrity will always be Brad Hall. I wonder what's happened to him. He's kind of disappeared off YouTube. I don't know if any of you guys used to follow Brad but he used to produce some exceptional videos highly entertaining stuff that man could rock any running shoe whatsoever always with a pair of khaki trousers hope you're okay out there Brad I'd love to do a collaboration if you're watching this video or perhaps if somebody out there knows how to contact him heaven knows I've tried you guys know that I love a good breakdown of a running shoe guide you love my hot takes and I like putting them in the oven, taking them out and giving them to you. Today I've got a best of running shoes for 2024 from Tom's Guide. I'm sure Tom's Guide used to do like tech reviews and stuff like that like 20 years ago or something. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. I'm getting old, I can't remember things. So first up we've got best value. This appears to be the Brooks Glycerin 21. Well, I guess it's a reasonably cheap sort of value shoe. Bit of stability thrown in there as well. But I'm sure there's other better shoes out there for value. Maybe like the SL2 from Adidas. Maybe if you want something that kind of does it all as well, like the Pegasus 41 or something. Maybe some of the Puma shoes. What about the Velocity Nitro 3? That's a great value offering. The most eco-friendly shoe is from Vega, the Condor 3. I do believe this one's got low CO2 levels, though I know ASICs have been doing lots to try and limit the amount of CO2 that is used to produce their running shoes, and they're sort of proudly placing it on the boxes, minimizing the amount of paper inside the actual box, getting rid of like plastic tags and all that kind of thing. I think it's a good vibe, it's a good path. Yeah, I don't know a lot about Vega. I think at some point somebody was going to send me a pair of these to review, but I never saw them. So maybe I could agree with that. Best for race day, they've got us the Vaporfly 3 from Nike. I think that's due to the lightness and that they're more stable 
than the Alpha Fly 3. I'm not entirely sure I agree with that. I always found the Alpha Fly 3 quite a stable shoe, really, certainly in the heel. Vapor Fly 3 was always quite a squashy affair and not really the lightest. There are other lighter shoes out there right now like the Metaspeed Sky Paris or the Edge, and the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite 3 as well. Much lighter than the Vaporfly 3 these days. Best for speed, which I would assume would be sort of like race day, or maybe this bike for training, I don't know, is the Endorphin Pro 3 from Saucony. They suggest this is the best Saucony shoe ever made. I think I actually agree with them on that one. I think that was a real banger. It was super light. I really loved the strange upper that they had on that one. And it seemed to have a lot of bounce and squash. Yeah, it was still very engaging to run in. Also a very durable shoe too. They got the best daily shoe down as being the Saucony Ride 17. From an all round point of view, I think it was okay when I reviewed it. it. Didn't really stand out as perhaps the best daily model. I think I'd probably go for something like the Nova Blast 4 perhaps, if you want something that kind of almost does everything. Even like your long runs, your easier runs. And then they've got best stability shoe as the Guide 17. Again, that's not a shoe that I've tried. I have tried out a guide model in the past, but I just found that the stability elements there were a little bit too sort of in your face. Best max cushion model was the Invincible 3. I think too many people have had some heel slip issues in that one for me to put it right up there as the best. Gotta be the Super Blast or Super Blast 2 for me, I think. If you can find a pair, it's a bit like trying to hire the A-Team. You know, if you can find the Super Blast 2, maybe you can buy it. Best overall running shoe they've listed as the Pegasus 41. I think there's probably better things out there right now in terms of overall. The Pegasus is still a good shoe. I still like it. It serves a purpose, but for me, not really a long run shoe. Still feels a little bit heavy, perhaps, if you're doing some faster paced sessions and things. I mean, it's a reasonable price, but I don't think it's the best overall running shoe. So I agree with a few of the selections here. Some of the Reasoning there seems a little bit odd. Again, it does seem like it's trying to sell certain shoes or push certain models there. But on the whole, I think it's a pretty decent guide actually for once. Some of the guides you find are clearly AI produced. And I don't think that that is the case with this one. There's a few shoe release dates that I've got for certain. 1st of October, the Glycerin Max from Brooks. That is an absolute banger. Absolutely love that shoe. It's got just the right blend of cushion and responsiveness up front. And considering how heavy the shoe is, at least in my size, I don't really notice it at all. It's one of those amazing shoes that just doesn't really feel that heavy on foot. Even in warmer weather, I found it quite breathable. Just does lots of things very, very well. A jack of all trades. Go and check out my review if you want a few more details on it. And another confirmed date for you, the New Balance 1080 V14. That is set to drop, I believe, on the 10th of October. Bags of cushion always in that model. I think they've made it a little bit softer as well and perhaps improved the weight somewhat. New Balance shoes do always hit the spot as well if you're sort of on that line, on the tightrope between sort of fashion and actual functionality. Okay, that is all the running news for the time being. If you've spotted any cool stories, let me know on the email in the description of this video. Very quick musical interlude for you. One of my favorite albums ever, and I think probably favorite artists ever, is a guy called Elliot Smith. There's a lot of people who haven't heard of him, perhaps from the younger generation, and whenever I mention his music to them, they go out and check out some of the tracks and they really, really enjoy hearing his stuff for the first time. And then they want to delve deeper and check out more of his songs. He actually produced quite a few albums, really, in terms of his solo career. One of my favourites is the track Waltz Number no. 2. I remember the first time I ever heard this song, literally sent shivers up my spine. I just absolutely loved the fact that it was a waltz as well. The drums so crisp and clear, beautiful acoustic guitar sounds complemented by some fantastic piano and what well, sounds like a Rickenbacker. The mix on this song is sublime. Elliot's voice is just right in the middle of everything with beautiful little details around it, sort of almost like presenting sort of memories and adding additional sort of feeling to some of the words that he's saying, this sort of little organ parts that come in and drift away. And the chord sequence itself is magnificent. 
don't think it's anything that quite touches it. it gets close to it it's mysterious it's intriguing and it's sort of bittersweet and it's just a wonderful track go and check it out and listen to it yourself people waltz number two by elliot smith thanks for tuning in everybody it's always appreciated hit that subscribe button if you've not done so already also give this video a thumbs up like it really helps out drop us a comment too to help fight the youtube algorithm my name's ed budd and i'll be seeing you